Hi everybody, it's Christy, your digital technology librarian, and I'm here with you for yet another Film Rec Friday. Um, this week we are going to talk all about films and documentaries that have something to do with uh, animals. Uh, it could be cats, it could be dogs, it could be chickens, it could be sea monsters from millions of years ago. Um, in any case, I tried to put together a nice little collection that are full of fun and interesting facts. So if you are an animal lover, this week is just for you. Um, as always, all of these can be viewed for free with just the use of your library card from Mylan Berlin. Um, and those are going to be available on our three video services, which are Clevenet's Overdrive, Hoopla Digital, and Canopy. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to those recs. As usual, our first couple of recommendations both come from the Clevenet Overdrive service. And the first of those is a National Geographic film called Sea Monsters, A Prehistoric Adventure. Now, Sea Monsters is a little bit different from, say, your standard National Geographic documentary. Because within this, we're talking about creatures that existed so long ago, we don't have obviously actual film footage to go off of. Instead, what uh, National Geographic has done is they've sort of woven together a picture of what life was probably like for a particular um, sea monster creature. Uh, and it from uh, fossilized remains and it sort of via CGI traces what this creature's life would probably have been. What kind of creatures would it have encountered in these ancient oceans? What kind of predators would it have had to face off against? How would it have learned to um, fish and hunt with others of its kind? Um, and it's really well done. It's narrated by Liev Schreiber, who of course has a great voice, but does a great job of imbuing this little CGI sea creature with a lot of character and personality. He's not talking in a character voice or anything like that. It's just a regular narration, but it makes it feel much more real. Um, and interspersed with these uh, CGI segments of this creature going about its life are spliced in moments of uh, theatrically performed uh, dinosaur digs and sea creature digs throughout uh, different time periods when they'd find different remains. Um, and they just dramatize those moments. And so you get a good mix of a bit of live action with the CGI moments, and it tells a really, really interesting story. Um, it's educational, but thoroughly entertaining. It really does feel like a movie rather than um, a more factually based documentary. And the CGI is really quite solid for, um, you know, a non mainstream motion picture kind of video. Um, and you do get to see this creature go from beginning of her life to the end of it. Um, there's nothing overwhelmingly graphic, so it's good for pretty much all ages. It is uh, thoroughly interesting, and it has some really gorgeous music as well. So if you like um, films about prehistoric creatures, uh, Sea Monsters of Prehistoric Adventure is an ex excellent option. Very entertaining. Um, definitely recommended. And would love to see you see what you think about it. Um, my second recommendation from Clevenet Overdrive is for a really, really well-known documentary called Blackfish. Um, I rewatched it and it continues to be really difficult to watch because it's such, um, a sad story, really. Um, Blackfish follows, um, orcas are also colloquially known as killer whales. Uh, and it primarily follows, um, this one performing, uh, orca named Tilikum. Um, Tilikum became really, really famous for his aggression towards people, uh, and for causing the deaths of three people who 
um, two of whom were trainers and one of whom was a civilian who had broken into his paddock late at night. Um, for the, for, for people of a certain age, you probably grew up seeing uh, a lot of SeaWorld ads and of like the majestic beauty of these creatures. Uh, and when I was a kid, I never really thought about like the concept of what captivity is doing to these animals. So what Blackfish does is really sort of looks at how captivity has an effect on the aggression of these creatures. We don't have too many recorded deaths of humans in the when these creatures are in the wild, but we are seeing more of that sort of hyper aggressive behavior for the captive ones. So it, it sort of talks about that and sort of traces these lines of aggression and how it goes. Um, and it is like, like I said, it's a really hard watch. It's really good. And it's really well done film, a uh, very clear point of view, of course. Um, but it plays on that sort of nostalgic feel for these animals, you know, like who doesn't recall Shamu and like all of the different video clips and ads that we had of that and sort of playing into sort of this inherent guilt about, you know, how much we had enjoyed seeing this. What is it really doing? What are we enjoying? Um, it's, it's again, one that I think is absolutely worth watching, probably not for kids. <laughs> um, but definitely, um, something that I think we should see, uh, and, a, and some, a conversation that we should have about animals in captivity in general. Um, but especially about, uh, about these creatures. So, uh, if you're looking for something that is very definitely challenging to watch, but is moving and definitely has a strong message, Blackfish is certainly highly, highly recommended. Uh, so, uh, please do take a look at that on Clevenet Overdrive. Okay, let's move on to our second set of recommendations, all of which come from our Hoopla digital service, of course. Um, and the first recommendation is for one story and two adaptations, actually. Um, that story being E.B. White's classic children's tale, Charlotte's Web. Now, Charlotte's Web was adapted into two films, one of which is a 1978 animated feature and the other of which is a live action early 2000s, I believe, film as well, uh, both of which are excellent, excellent movies that are perfect for children and families, um, and uh, both of which are now currently available on Hoopla. Uh, the tale follows a runt of the litter pig named Wilbur as he is eventually adopted by a girl named Fern and brought into a new barnyard family only to discover that at some point in his future, he is set to become bacon. Um, this is, of course, distressing to him, and Charlotte has to swoop in. Uh, she is a brilliant spider who decides to save his life. Now, classic story, like we were mentioning, uh, with very, both movies have very different tones, I would say. Uh, but very much entertaining and very much worth a watch. The first uh, adaptation, which uh, is the animated 70s picture, uh, features Debbie Reynolds as the voice of Charlotte, and she has such a gorgeous voice, really, uh, and it's totally perfect, very maternal, and that's very much the kind of character that she portrays in this, and... Um, she even has a couple of musical numbers, if I remember correctly. And uh, it's just a really lovely animated feature. Um, the live action, of course, stars Dakota Fanning. That's definitely your big name draw in that set of uh, performers, but is also really, really well done uh, feature. Uh, both are very enjoyable uh, adventure stories, really coming of age stories and are both highly recommended. So Charlotte's Web, whether you choose the cartoon version or the live action version, you can't go wrong. Please do check them both out on Hoopla. My second recommendation on Hoopla is for a 
movie that's based on a true story and it's called A Street Cat Named Bob. Now, this movie follows a young man named James Bowen. He's a Londoner uh, who's living as a homeless man. He is a former heroin addict and uh, through circumstances he ends up growing close to this stray cat that they name Bob. Now Bob starts to follow James wherever he goes and over time it becomes, their relationship becomes kind of a viral event. Um, he busks and he gets more attention from it and he starts to turn his life around and it really stems from the time that he found Bob and it's quite a moving story really when you watch it um even though it's a dramatized version of it you really you know can't help but think about the real man that this is based on and the real cat and how this random relationship was able to change James's life this cat this guy's life um you know you don't really think about how a relationship with a pet can do that, but it's amazing how it actually happened. So um, if you're looking for something moving and inspirational, please do check out A Street Cat, Cat Named Bob. It really is, um, really is a wonderful, wonderful story in the end. Um, so make sure you check it out. My final recommendation for Hoopla is a documentary-like film, and it's 100% a fictionalized film called Quill. Now Quill is a Japanese film, so it does have subtitles, but it's a hundred percent worth giving a try, even if you're not a huge fan of subtitles. It follows this young Labrador retriever as he trains and learns to become a guide dog. Now there are no funny voices or characterizations or anything about this dog. He's just a dog, but while you're watching, you're learning the kinds of lessons that these creatures have to go through to become guide dogs. And it's amazing what they have to do. Um, but at the same time as you're getting all of this factual information, and it really is, you're also getting this beautiful story of this dog with the different relationships with different people that it has, its original family, and then the train, the relationship he has with his trainer, and eventually the relationship that he has with the gentleman he becomes a guide dog for. And that relationship is really challenging because the gentleman who comes to own him, um, comes to own Quill, you know, is having a such a hard time with his blindness. Um, he was a journalist, very independent, and now suddenly has to learn to depend on this creature. And, you know, as they grow together, it's really very, very moving and really beautiful. Um, it's a hundred percent tearjerker kind of movie. It will, it made me cry twice, I think. Um, but you really learn to love this animal and then the people around him. And, you know, it's one of those films that really explores that relationship that you can have with a pet and it does an amazing, amazing job of, of, of evoking the same kind of emotions. So a hundred percent recommended Quill on Hoopla. Please check it out. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal movie. Okay. So my last two recommendations of course are from our canopy service. And the first of those recs is for a movie called show cats. Um, in show cats, <laughs> It, the documentary maker sort of takes you on the adventure of what it's like to be a cat fancier, a, a person who breeds these show cats and who goes to these different competitions. He interviews a ton of different fanciers and, um, it's really quite amazing. If you've ever seen the movie Best in Show, which follows dog breeders, it's, it's very similar, except it's real. That's what I always love about these kinds of documentaries, how very intense the competition really is. There's this standard of perfection, which I find fascinating, especially with the, 
concept of cats. I being a cat person, I just they're all so very different. I I I just don't understand how how some of them are so well behaved and can be presented this way. My cats would 100% never allow themselves to be judged. Um and what this film does besides just follow along with these people is it shows, you know, how difficult it is to to really show these cats the training that they have to go through this sort of grooming and pampering and and fussing that goes into being a champion campaign cat um it's really really fun to watch i mean honestly it's such a fun fun documentary um as are most of these dog cat rabbit chicken show documentaries i recommend you watch if you find one that's about one of these kinds of competitions watch it it will be so much fun and so entertaining um so if you want a good chuckle but also to learn about a world that you might not be familiar with please do check out show cats for that matter check out chicken people which follows um chicken show bre chicken breeders and chicken shows um and and all of these other uh competition documentaries they're really really great and they're really so much fun um so again show cats highly recommended and my very last recommendation for the week is for a much less fun but incredibly important and informative documentary called vanishing of the bees which of course follows um, the challenges that are going on now with the dying out of so many honeybee populations. Um, you know, I've watched a ton of these and every time I do, it really terrifies me because honeybees really are so important in so many agricultural, uh, industries, you know, whether it's, you know, apples or broccoli, this is what or watermelons, onions, whatever. These are the creatures that pollinate these crops and they're vital and they are disappearing. Uh, so Vanishing of the Bees really follows, you know, commercial beekeepers uh, and what they're trying to do to keep uh, their colonies healthy, as, as healthy as possible. But it also explores, you know, the bigger ramifications of what it means should a honeybee population really be absolutely devastated, what that can mean for every industry. Um, it tries to trace, you know, U.S. honeybees, but also Eastern honeybees, um, European honeybees, what is going on in all of these different communities. And, you know, science really hasn't given us a concrete answer as to why is this happening so it traces what could be the cause what what could um uh, this mean long term really and it's terrifying i mean that's that's just bottom line the honeybee population's potential destruction is is a scary thing and all of these documentaries try and take a different viewpoint and try to get the message across. So uh, if you have an interest in this sort of thing, please do watch Vanishing of the Bees. It's really, really fascinating. It does a nice job of having its own take on the situation and tracing it in different ways than other documentary films have in the past. Uh, so if you do have that interest, this definitely is one to keep an eye out for and to try. So again, Vanishing of the Bees available on Canopy. Excellent, excellent documentary. Please do check it out. Um, and with that, that is our selection of recommendations for Film Rec Friday. Uh, if you have any other recommendations for films that you are watching that you want to get the word out about, please do comment in the... Uh, below section and hopefully uh, other people will be able to watch the movies that you are also enjoying. If you have recommendations for th themes we should do in the future, please comment with those as well. And with that, um, I hope everybody has a good weekend and I hope that they find some excellent films and documentaries as well. So we'll see you next week. <laughs>